so anybody has any questions of the previous classes regarding the stability of the slopes or what's ever anybody would like to pose a question or uh, need some more clarity of uh, whatever so far we have discussed okay so let me start the today's lecture so in this we were discussing about uh, stability analysis by pi is equals to 0 meter so in case of the clay soil so that uh, so where the slopes are in homogeneous clay soil with the uh, friction angle is zero so this is what we have covered now let us see the extension of the same thing so this is how we arrive at uh, the factor of safety is nothing but cu by cd r tau f by cd the factor of safety can be expressed either in terms of the shear strength or in terms of the cohesion so both are same now on these equations further work was done by the felinius and taylor so they have provided some kind of an analytical solution for determining the minimum factor of safety corresponding to which uh, a critical circle arrives at okay so in order to make an analytical solution so they expressed uh, the developed cohesion in terms of the gamma h into m so they introduce a parameter called as a m so that is called as a stability number in fact uh, they are not the first persons to introduce the stability number uh, the terzeg is the first person who introduced uh, it is reverse of stability number that is gamma h by cd that is called as a stability factor stability factor so they uh, the felinius and taylor in fact taylor is the person who corrected the same definition from the stability factor to stability number which is defined as cd by gamma h cd by gamma h so the major advantage of the stability number is we can develop some kind of a pre defined correlations as a function of the slope angle as a function of the internal friction of the soil and so on and so forth so on and so forth now if you look at this equation carefully so this comprises the stability number comprises of the soil property that is cohesion developed all along the failure plane and density of the soil and the height of the embankment with which you are dealing with with which you are dealing with. under ordinary circumstances so you can go in a two ways you can define the factor of safety value as per the codel provisions then try to determine the critical or the allowable height of the slope or allowable cut of the slope whatever it is on the other way suppose if i assume the factor of safety as a 1 so if i assume the factor of safety as a 1 unity then whatever the height that i am going to get will become a critical 
will become the critical height. So the critical height can be determined by assuming the factor of safety as a one. One and at critical height also. So if you look at the previous uh, slide, the factor of safety is defined as the factor of safety is defined as the ratio of d upon r. Yeah, C D upon C U R reverse C U upon C V C U upon C V. So here, when the factor is one, so here C U will become to C D. So this indicates that the full cohesion gets mobilized or along the failure plane. And when the factor of safety is unity, we can rewrite the above equation in terms of the H critical that is C U by gamma H. C U by gamma H. Now uh, Taylor and Fellinius together they work to develop some kind of a stability charts using the stability number. So let us look at what kind of the charts they have proposed and how they can be used. So this is called the stability chart. Here you can see a graph. Uh, graphical relationships are developed between the stability number M versus the slope angle beta. So here the stability number already related with the CD by gamma H or C by gamma H. Okay, this is the slope that we are dealing with, where H is height of the embankment. And since we are dealing with the homogeneous soil, so if you talk about the base failure, so the base failure uh, happens when there is a weak soil stratum uh, or the firm soil stratum at some depth from the ground surface. So accordingly, so they have defined D is a factor which is the ratio of the depth of the firmest soil to the depth of the embankment. So that's what you can do and uh, define it. And beta is the slope angle. So beta is the slope angle. And there is another terminology that is uh, N into H where N is a small factor. So which defines from what depth or what distance from the toe of the slope the sloping or the slip surface emerges on the ground emerges on the ground. So the beauty of the stability number and the stability charts are one can able to determine. So what is the maximum allowable cut depth or the slope height embankment height and possibly at what location the slope failure emerges when it is starting on the top surface or the bank. Now let us try to understand. So the stability chart. Uh, this is the free defined correlations are the uh, graphic graphics as you can see up to beta of 53 degrees centigrade up to beta 53 where the slope angle is 53. The failure is predominantly toe failure. The failure is predominantly toe failure. While when slope angle is exceeding 53 then depending upon the value and other soil properties the failure could be either toe or midpoint failure or slope circuits. That is a slope failure or a toe failure or the base failure, anything. And correspondingly, so the correlations have been developed for different conditions. You can see for beta greater than 53, all are toe circuits, all are toe circuits. So this is what. Now for beta less than 53, for beta less than 53, toe circle. Here you can see in this graph, all dark lines all dark lines indicates toe circle failure and midpoint circle some kind of a dotted line with a point. So this is one. This is a midpoint. This is also midpoint and this is also midpoint and the, even this one also midpoint. So these are midpoint circle failures. Then slope failure. So this is the slope failure and this is also slope. Failure. This is also slope. Failure. So these graphs define for the possible failure by the slow toe circle or the midpoint circle or the slope circle. Slope circle. Okay, so how to use it this one? I will explain in the subsequent slides. But the major limitations of this entire chart is so this entire chart is valid only for the slopes of purely saturated clay because just try to imagine that there is an inherent assumption of phi is zero. The angle of internal friction is zero. That means the soil has to be fully saturated. And undrained condition, phi is zero default indicates that the soil is under undrained condition. So saturated, saturated clay under undrained condition. Only under this condition, these typical predefined graphs are valid. Under no other condition, these graphs are valid.
so this is what is interpretation that can be made from uh, taylor stability num stability chart so for beta greater than 53 the critical circle is always a two circle so that's uh, same thing we understood for beta less than 53 the critical circle may be two or slope or mid circle depending upon the depth function depending upon the depth function which is defined as the vertical distance from the top of slope to firm base by the height of the slope d is so the ratio of total depth upon the depth of the embankment so when the critical circle is a midpoint circle uh, figure 15.15 shows the location of the sliding circle so the location of the sliding circle we, what exactly is the location maximum m for failure at the midpoint circle is 0.181 so Suppose if you take beta is equal to 53, this is equivalent to stability number of one. So this, this is the minimum or the maximum uh, stability number for failure at the midpoint circle. That is beta of 53. So beta of 53. So further efforts were made. How to identify the center of the circle? How to identify the center of the circle? So assuming that the slope is failing under two failure or slope failure or midpoint failure. So try to understand first of all uh, how to identify the location of the center of the circle in case if it is a two circle. So we have already defined the possibility of failure of the two circle when beta is greater than 53 the critical circle is always a two circle. The critical circle is always a two circle. So the location can be determined uh, using this chart again, which is a relationship between slope angle beta, slope angle beta, then alpha is angle made by the cart, alpha is angle made by the cart, and alpha and theta. So theta is, this is the angle between, uh, what do you call, the lines joining the top and bottom most uh, points of the slip circle bottommost basis of the slip circle. So if you look at carefully, so the uh, R, the radius of the circle can be determined using this equation, using this equation. This is simple mathematical jugglery. I will show in one of the sum how to derive this equation. But uh, broadly, if you look at this graph, suppose if I know, suppose if I know the slope angle beta and if I draw any vertical line, any vertical line, so wherever this line is touching the alpha point, alpha point, we try to draw another horizontal line. So this indicates the value of the alpha. This indicates the value of the alpha. Then same straight line extend onto the another uh, predefined curve that is theta, that is theta, and wherever it is touching. So project another horizontal line onto the y-axis, and wherever it is touching. So this will give you the beta value. So this will give you the beta value. Suppose if I know the alpha, if I know the beta, anyhow beta is known because this is the angle with which you are constructing an embankment. Next, our aim is to determine the alpha. So you can see alpha, if I know the alpha value, if I know the alpha value, I can draw an inclined line which touches berm at some point, at some point. Okay, so, and uh, I can also know the I can also know the theta value and from one point I can draw one curve of the circle, one curve of the circle. So then with the help of known theta, then I can draw another point, another point. And this should make, so the angle of the, uh, angle of, so theta, theta. So this is one of the quite easiest procedure to determine uh, the center of the circle. But you may have to make some kind of a trials. It's not so easy. So though we could able to explain here, it is quite easy, but when you put it everything in a graphical form, you need to little work it on it. So this is in case of location of the center of the circle for two circle. Next in case of uh, the beta less than 53. So in, in this case, the mode of failure is three varieties, toe, slope or midpoint. So first let us try to understand how to identify the center of the circle in case of the midpoint circle mode of failure. When the critical circle is a midpoint circle, that is the failure surface is a tangent. 
to the uh, form base, its position can be determined with the aid of this figure, 15.15, so, which is again a relationship between B, depth factor versus the slope angle beta, slope angle beta. Now this D and beta again interrelated with another value that is N, that is N. Now if you look at carefully, a close observation of oh, these diagrams reveal that using this graph, I can able to determine, I can able to determine what should be my maximum height of the embankment if I know the depth of the firm stratum from the ground surface. The depth of the firm stratum from the ground surface. And alternatively, so I can also understand or able to interpret at what distance from the toe of the slope the uh, failure plane emerges. The failure plane emerges. So I can able to determine the distance that is n times of h and I can fix what should be the allowable height of the embankment. So using this graph in case of the midpoint circle. Some of the midpoint circle. So next toe circle, uh, this is another method already we have seen uh, toe circle for toe circle for beta greater than 53. Now another toe circle in case of beta less than 53. So in less than 53, so we have to use uh, the this graphical, this graph together with the table 15.1, table 15.1. Okay, so let us try to understand. So from the table 15.1, if I know the slope, Again, that is uh, beta, which is nothing but a beta. Then I can, sorry, oh, uh, sorry, beta is different, slope is different. Beta is different, slope is different. In fact, beta is expressed in terms of the slope angle only. It's true. So, n dash is equal to 1 means it is 45 degree. So, beta is expressed in n dash, both are same. If I know the beta, if I know the beta, then this is approximately equivalent to alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 1 and alpha 2. You see if I know alpha 1 and alpha 2, so wherever these two lines are meeting, that should give us the center of the circle. So that should give us the center of the circle. So once I know the center of the circle, then I can try to draw the uh, slip circular failure plane. Circular failure plane. So we have seen now uh, two circle if beta is greater than 53 and two circle if beta is less than 53. So the procedures are entirely different if you look at carefully. So then how to use the stability chart? So a small demo has been given here. Suppose if I in the given sum, I know the slope angle beta. I know the slope angle beta and I know the height of the slope or height of the embankment. If at all, if you have fixed the height of the embankment, and soil properties that is density and undrained cohesion of the soil mass. So then I can able to determine the minimum factor of safety corresponding to this height, corresponding to this height and this beta value. So what is the first step is get the stability number from the chart. So here beta is equal to 60. So corresponding to beta, draw a vertical projection onto the stability chart and wherever it touching the line, so from there, draw another horizontal line, wherever it is touching the vertical axis, that is y-axis, that should give you the stability number. That should give you the stability number. The, the procedure is valid irrespective whether beta is greater than 53 or less than 53. For everything, it is same. The, the first step is get the value of M from the chart. Second, calculate CD using the equation of CD is equal to gamma H into M or m is equal to h. So whatever, if you try to rearrange in terms of the m, fine. So if you are asked to determine the cd and arrange the equation, cd is equal to gamma m, where m is known, gamma is known, h is known. Then calculate the factor of safety, fs is equal to cu by cd. Undrained cohesion, the cohesion that is developed. So this is one condition. So where uh, height of the embankment is known, uh, but factor of safety is to be determined. Then second case, suppose uh, how to determine the depth to the hard state. Suppose if I know the beta value, if I know the beta value, 
and uh, the, that is in case of the other one. So in the previous sum, in the previous slide, we have seen how to determine the factor of safety at the critical height if the failure mode is a two circle mode. Now let us go for the another case where beta is less than 53 and it could be any mode of failure to or mid circle or slip uh, slope or slope failure doesn't matter. So first thing is that calculate D calculate D which is defined as the depth from the top surface to the form stratum by the height of the embankment. So HD by D so HD by D then accordingly we should identify the respective curve from this one a respective curve from this one based on the d value that is hd by d once i know the d because there are many curves here then i know the beta value that is 30 degree i know the beta value that is 30 degree so try to make a projection in the vertical direction on to a curve which is corresponding to d the calculated value of the d Suppose if the D is exactly known, then there is no problem. We can straight away project the vertical line onto the particular curve. If it is not, then one has to do interpolation. If it is not, then we have to do interpolation. Okay, so once this is uh, uh, known, then draw another horizontal line onto the ordinate and pick up the value of the M that is called the stability number. And once stability number is known, again calculate the CD value that is developer cohesion. Once developed the cohesion is known, calculate the factor of safety that is the ratio of undrained cohesion upon the cohesion that is going to develop during the full mobilization. Full mobilization. So this is how one can able to use the stability chart to identify what kind of the failure it is depending upon the slope angle and depending upon the depth of the uh, form state. So I request everyone uh, take a pen and paper and calculator and try to note down this one. So clearly understand how to use the stability number so that we will not be having any kind of problem during the examination. So any questions on the stability number? Anybody has any question? Anyone has any question? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, so anybody has any question? No, sir. Okay, so no problem. No, yeah, so try to note down this sum. A cut slope is to be made in a soft saturated clay with its sides rising at an angle of 60 degree as you can see in here. So this is the cut slope to the horizontal. Given Cu is 40 kilo pascals and 17.5 kilo newton per cubic meter. Determine the maximum depth up to which the excavation can be carried out. The radius R of the critical circle when the factor of 50 is equal to 1 and find the distance BC. So find the distance BC. So this is the sum given. So this is the schematic of the given problem. Uh, there are uh, several things. So this blue line indicates this is the face of the cut slope. 
and this curve indicates the possible failure plane. We do not know. We need to determine. So then theta is the angle between the top uh, two points of the circle, which is meeting at the toe and on the bend. H critical is the critical height of the slope and R is the radius of the circle. So angle made by the vertical cut is 60 degree with respect to horizontal. You need to determine the alpha value and you need to determine the R. You need to determine the R. So first uh, let us try to address the part A of the sum. So determine the maximum depth up to which the excavation can be carried out. So uh, since the beta is given as 60 degree, which is greater than 53, then from this uh, stability chart, it is easy to understand that when beta is 53, it is only toe failure. It is only the toe failure. Beta is 60 here. So as for the previous discussion, so it is only the toe failure. So the critical circle is a toe circle. The critical circle is a toe circle. So from figure 15.13, so this is one. For beta is equal to 60, for beta is equal to 60, stability number is for beta is equal to 60, for beta is equal to 60. So pick up the value of the stability number M. That is 0 0.195. 0 0.195. Now, I, we are assuming that it is a critical circle. So at a critical, the factor of safety is 1. So the factor of safety is 1. So therefore, H critical can be rewritten as so Cu by gamma H. So Cu by gamma H. So H critical. So Cu is known and gamma is known. M has been picked up from this stability chart. This is how we have determined the M value substitute all the parameters into this equation. So into this equation, then what you get is critical embankment or cut 11.72 meter. So as for this sum, if the undrained cohesion of the slope Okay, but try to understand when I say the critical, critical, if there is any change in the gamma or any change in the cohesion, undrained cohesion, then you are bound to experience the failure. You are bound to experience the failure. So you have to be very, very careful. That's what is called as a critical condition. Now let us try to understand what happens if undrained strength of the cohesion, undrained cohesion is increases. What happens to the critical height? Sir, it will increase. So if you are increasing the undrained cohesion, so the height of the depth of the vertical cut be increased. OK. But this is a mathematical analysis. So what is the physical meaning of increase of CU? What is the physical meaning of increase of unrained cohesion? We are increasing the strength of the soil. So we are increasing the strength of the soil. Any other logical answer by others? It's a good, it's a correct answer. We are increasing. So by stabilization or by some other means. Okay, so we might get uh, more stable uh, soil. Yeah, so when you increase or when you compact the soil soil sample, then we may increase the undrained cohesion value of the sample. That is correct. Okay, so let us try to understand. Suppose, say, I have given you a, a natural soil whose undrained cohesion is, say, 40. Recall the previous all discussions, the same undrained condition can also be arrived during the compaction of the soil sample. Like when you are building an embankment for earthen dam or embankment for a road or the pavement, anything doesn't matter. So the first condition prevails is undrained condition. 
so there what you will get is undrained cohesion undrained cohesion okay so as for this equation as for this equation your embankment or slope becomes critical during the undrained condition again your embankment the height of the embankment becomes critical during the construction during the construction now it is obvious that with time the undrained cohesion increases because you are allowing the water to dissipate so the undrained cohesion initial increases to certain extent then thereafter the whole transformation takes place from undrained condition to the drained condition so that improves the stability of the soil or the embankment compacted embankment okay so this is what is the logic or the physical meaning of improvement in the cu improvement in the cu so improvement in the cu can happen only because of the dissipation of the pore water pressure however the dissipation can happen in a natural clay or in the compacted soil in the compacted soil both are time bound phenomena sir yeah sir when uh, the drain condition will start prevailing yes then that strength will be due to five factor uh no no it's not five factor there is a transformation it's like uh, taking up of one from another so when the soil is becoming undrained to drained okay because of this uh, drainage condition two Season. things are going two Season things are going to, yes sir no two things are going to happen simultaneously the first thing is that there is a rearrangement of the particles okay sir okay so that rearrangement causes some improvement in the pipe or development of the pipe yes sir okay okay sir okay. now this is the small uh, how to understand about uh, the derivation of r that is radius of the circle in case of the toe failure as if you look at this diagram carefully if i take uh, theta see just consider triangle o a d or triangle o c d triangle uh, o a d or o c d so this is theta the half angle is theta by 2 sin theta by 2 is nothing but d c opposite side by r so d c opposite side by r but the d c is can be d c can be written as ac by 2 ac by 2 so where ac ac can be determined by taking the another triangle so that is a c f a c f this is another triangle so here also if i take sin alpha sin alpha so which is nothing but h critical divided by ac h critical divided by ac so ac is determined from the two circles a o c and a c f so if you equate a c and try to simplify all the terms then what you get is the r radius of the slip circle in terms of the critical height of the embankment critical height of the embankment okay so this is how one can able to derive uh, how to determine the radius of the critical slip circle sir how alpha can be calculated sir uh alpha we we have a chart na alpha uh so this is chart so this chart is uh, alpha and theta on the y axis and beta on the x axis okay if i know the beta if i know the beta i can draw vertical projection onto the alpha line onto the theta line okay sir so now you understood how to derive the r so this part is done next is uh, if i know uh, yeah now let us try to utilize whatever you were asking i know the beta value for beta is equal to 60 alpha pick up the value of the alpha for beta is equal to 60 draw an vertical projection first onto the alpha axis draw an horizontal line so pick up the value of the alpha which is approximately 35 which is approximately then 
So same extend the vertical line onto the another uh, graph that is related to theta. Theta. So wherever it is touching another horizontal line. So from the ordinate pick up the value of the theta. Pick up the value of the theta. So from this diagram I know the alpha and I know the theta for a given beta angle. So you are asked to determine what is the radius of the two circle. So you know the equation which has been derived in the previous slide and using the chart we have determined the value of alpha and theta. So substitute everything into this equation and you can able to determine the value of R radius that is 17.28 meter. Now part C that is determine the card length BC. Card length BC. So here you can see. So the BC can be defined as uh, BC or EF. EF. Uh, let me. So this is BC or EF. This is equal into EF. So VF can be written as AF minus AE. So this is a geometrical simplification. Just try to do all geometrical simplification. Then AF minus AE can be written in terms of the cot, cot alpha and cot beta. So cot alpha and cot beta. Angles. So substitute everything. Then what you get is the length of the BC. Length of the BC. So now you understood only by knowing the value of beta and couple of the soil properties. So if I know the beta and if I know the undrained strength of the soil, I can able to so determine the uh, first I can able to identify the center of the circle. Then I can able to calculate the radius of the circle and I can able to determine since it is a toe circle toe circle. I know one point then I can able to determine the another point that is B and C. So that is B and C. Hope it is clear to everyone. So try to note down another sum. A cut slope was excavated in a saturated clay. The slope made an angle of 40 degree with the horizontal. Slope failure occurred when the cut reached a depth of 6.1. Reached a depth of 6.1 meters. So previous soil exploration showed that a rock layer was located at a depth of 9.15 meter below the ground surface. Assuming an undrained condition and gamma sat of 25 kN per cubic meter. Find the following. Determine the undrained cohesion of the clay. What was the nature of the critical circle? And with reference to the toe of the slope, at what distance did the surface of the sliding intersect the bottom of the excavation? Bottom of the excavation. Okay, so this is the sum given. Okay, so your first observation should be what is the value of beta? What is the value of beta? So beta is 40. Beta is 40. So first of all, your beta is less than 53. Meaning thereby you can end up the toe failure or mid slope failure or slow failure. Anything can happen. So we do not know what kind of failure it is. And on top of that, two other parameters are given. The height of the embankment is 6.1 meter, but the firm stratum exists at a depth of 9.15 meter. So that means I can able to determine another parameter that is called as a D. D. So this is the depth of the firm stratum from the top top berm, top of the berm to the height of the embankment, or the depth of the cut, whatever it is. So 9.15 divided by 6.1. So D is 1.5. So D is 1.5. So among these three defined graphs of the stability chart, identify a curve which represents D is equals to 1.5. D is equals to 1.5. So this is 1.5. So there is a 1.5. This 1.5 belongs to what kind of failure? Is it a failure or midpoint failure or slow failure? So to understand this one, just go to the previous slide. Where it is, yeah. So let us try to understand. There are three lines. 
so here here so d equal to 4 this is uh, 4 is yeah midpoint failure 4 is midpoint failure 2 also midpoint failure and 1.5 also midpoint failure 1.5 also midpoint failure so 1 is the slope circle and 1.2 is slope circle plus toe failure 1.2 so there is another indication also this dark black line indicates so within which the toe circle uh, failure forms this another uh, hatchet portion hatchet portion this indicates that within this zone the failure is toe failure above is uh, midpoint failure and below is slow failure so below is slow failure okay the failure is a two circle failure b of 1.2 but beta is less than uh, 20 then this is a slow failure this is a slope failure. Okay, but D corresponding to 1, any value of beta is a slope failure. Any value of beta is a slope failure. Similarly, D corresponding to 1.5, uh, 1 1.5 up to B in between, say approximately uh, 17 to 12 or 11, it is toe failure, and which otherwise it is slope failure. Which otherwise it is a slope failure. So you have to be very, very careful. So when you are using the stability chart, so try to understand intricately the meanings and the relevance of each and every graph and try to understand how to read these graphs. Okay, so now from this we understand uh, how to understand whether it is a toe circle or midpoint circle or slope circle uh, or how to read. Hello sir. Yeah. So, sir, even if the beta angle is less than 53, there is also a possibility to create a toe circuit. Correct. That's what is the meaning of this graph. Okay. If you look at carefully, the toe circle, the toe circle failure can happen for the whole range of beta from 90 to hoping up to, say, uh, approximately 7. Or up to 20. If not up to 7, up to 20, you can look at this entire dark blue line. So two circle failure can happen for the whole beta range from 90 to 20. Okay. okay. So any other questions? Anybody is any any question in understanding or reading this graph? Sir, the beta value will be provided to us by survey engineers. Uh, no, no, it is not provided by the survey engineers. In fact, you need to come up with the beta value. See, suppose say you are asked to make a canal. Okay, so it is your duty to calculate the slope which is behind the critical. That means not a critical, but safe. So in, in reality, you have to go in a reverse way. You try Sir, but if some natural slope is already there, then how to determine the beta value of that? Uh, you have to literally measure using the inclinometers or any other device. Okay, sir. Okay, so this part is clear now. How to uh, how to understand? Now I know the D that is one point five. So pick up the corresponding uh, lines from the chart. Then gamma sat is 17.29 given. Then determine the critical, uh, the critical height. When you say critical height, the factor of safety is a one. So CU by gamma m undrained position is, uh, what was the undrained position? It, it was not given, undrained position value. So H critical is CU by gamma m. Next for beta is equal to 15, so beta is equal to 43, D1.5, M is equal to 0.175. I know the M value. So first step is identification of the proper chart. Next is calculating or picking up the value of the stability number M. So for D is equal to 1.5, beta is equal to 40, 
the value of the m is picked up as 0.175. So I know the m uh, and I know the critical height that is 6.1 meter, 6.1 meter, then I can able to determine what is the minimum value of the undrained cohesion required, that is 18.46 kilo kilopascals. Okay, so as we understood that part B, what kind of the failure it is, it is a midpoint circle because D is equal to 1.5, D is equals to 1.5. Next, uh, the third part of problem is, with reference to the toe of the slope, at what distance did the surface of the sliding intersects the bottom of the excavation? So for that you need to use another graph, uh, just try to understand. With reference to the toe of the slope, toe of the slope, that means you need to determine NH, NH, toe of the slope with reference to NH, NH. Okay, if you have any question, then let me make you understand again. You should not get confused. Yeah, NH, the distance from toe of the slope to the the slip circle which is emerging on the ground surface. With reference to the toe of the slope, Other graph. So this graph is developed between D, so and slope angle beta, and the factor called as a n. n. So for different values of the n, so n could be 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Now I know the D value, I know the D that is 1.5, I know the beta 40. So corresponding to beta 40 and D 1.5, pick up the value of the n. Now here I know the value of n for 1 and for 0. So we need to pick up the values of uh, n corresponding to 1 and n corresponding to 0. Then you need to interpolate between these two. So you need to go for interpolation. So after interpolation, you will get the n of 0 0.9. So 0 0.9. So we know the equation distance is equal to n into h critical. So n is picked up as 0 0.9, 0 0.9 into 6.1. So the failure surface from the toe can emerge at a distance of 5.49 meter. 5.49 meter. Okay, so this is how one can able to use all these predefined charts, predefined chart charts for determining the depth of the form stratum or determining the minimum undrained cohesion requirement or the slope angle beta or the critical height, so on and so forth. So, okay, so you should not only confine to what has been discussed here. So you have to, you should be able to go forward and backward, anything. So if I given the cohesion value, then what should be the critical height? If this is my critical height, then what should be the value of the cohesion? So either way, so forward and backward, you should be able to understand. So that's, that's what all about uh, pi is equal to zero analysis. So in homogeneous soil. Next is uh, how to determine the factor of safety if it is a C5 soil, homogeneous C5 soil, slopes in homogeneous C5 soil. So one of the simplest method, uh, it is a bit tricky method also, one of the, another one to, uh, to be employed for determining the factor of safety in case of the C5 homogeneous soil is friction circle method. So here, uh, so this is free body diagram of a slope so the slope is A, B and C. So A, B is the slope of the scale. So alpha, beta is the angle made by the slope face and alpha is the angle made by the AC. AC. So A, C you can see in two ways. A, C this uh, dotted dark line is card. So this is called as a card length. This is called as a card length. While this blue line is called as a arc length. Blue line called as a arc length. Height of the embankment is H. 
and I know this uh, wedge A, B, C, that is uh, the weight of the wedge is W, which acts in the downward direction. Then C, D, the cohesion develops all along the failure plane, all along the failure plane. F, E is the resultant of normal and tangential force. F is the resultant of normal and tangential force. Okay. So then the assumption here is this is called the friction circle method. So the method involves an assumption of uh, the whole failure happens not at a single center of the circle, but happens within a circle, within a circle where the diameter of the circle is called as a R sine phi. R sine phi. So if you look at the all previous discussions where the center of the circle was a single point, but in C5 method, so it is an inherent assumption that your the center of the circle may lie at any point within this circle that the whose radius is R sine phi. R sine phi. Now here try to understand this entire analysis of C5 homogeneous soil lies on two important things. That is the card length AC and arc length AC. Card length AC and arc length AC. So this is the shear strength of the soil tau f. So C plus sigma tan pi. So again in this analysis the pore water pressure is assumed to be zero. Then weight of the soil H A B C can be determined as area of the A B C multiplied by the density. So multiplied by the density. First let us try to take the arc and card of A B C. Suppose for example if I take initially if I take initially C D is the cohesion developing or this is the resistance against the slope failure that is W. Take a small element of C D. Take a small element of C D. Suppose this C D number of elements. I can make any number of elements. OK, all along this one is uh, C D develops. And you look at the direction of this CD. For different elements, the direction is in different directions. Okay, it is not same. So if you take the resultant of all this DCD, the resultant of all this CD, so that can be represented as CD. That can be represented as CD. So this is the capital CD is resultant of numerous small DCD uh, portions or elements. Capital CD is the resultant of the cohesive force that is equal to the cohesion per unit area times the length of the card. The length of the card. This is capital C. Okay. So now we can correlate the resultant with the card of AC. If you look at carefully, the resultant CD is in the direction of the card AC. So CD acts in a direction parallel to the card AC parallel to the card AC and at a distance of A. At a distance of A. So this is CD. So the CD acts at a distance of A from the center of the circuit. Center of the circuit. OK, CD. But card acts at a distance of R, AC. So if you look at carefully, the CD into A, the CD into A, uh, that is the resultant of all DCD. And the uh, this is so this is the arc. This is arc. Arc. So C D that is cohesion developed all along the arc. Uh, the total cohesion is nothing but C D multiplied by the length of the arc. This is the total cohesion developed. Cohesion developed. Now if I multiply this with the lever arm distance, then I will get the moment. CD dash, that is the cohesion developed all along the length of the arc multiplied by the lever arm distance. Then I will get the total moment. The total moment. OK, but the same thing we have taken in the form of a resultant. So if we equate these two, so the equate these two, then we will get the simplification so which gives an idea of how to determine the A. So this is A indicates the CD, the point or 
instance at which the CD, the total summation of the CD acts. So A can be determined as the arc length divided by the cart length. Carefully, arc length of the circle is always greater than the cart length of the circle. So therefore, A is always greater than the radius of the circle. A is always greater than the radius of the circle, but don't assume that it is too much. It is only small fraction. So small fraction. So the fraction is equivalent to the ratio of AC arc by AC card. So this is what is the basic philosophy of the C phi solve. Now one important thing is that uh, in case of this C phi analysis, now we understood about the how position is developing how this cohesion is causing a movement over the uh, center of the circle O. Center of the circle O. Now we know the W, we know the W, and we understood about the CD, we understood about the CD. Now there is also another force, that is F. We did not talk about the F. F is a resultant of normal and frictional force. F is a resultant of normal and frictional force, this F. And this is normal to the slope circle, but with an angle of pi, that is friction angle, that is friction angle always. And if you draw a line of action of the F, draw a line of action of the F, so this line of action of F passes or makes a tangent with the friction circle, the tangent with friction circle, or other way around of reading this one is, other way around of reading this one is, so you draw line of action of CD, line of action of CD, so which is passing through the center of the circle, passing through the center of the circle. And you draw another line, the line of action of resultant force F, resultant force F. So at approximately the center of the circle, the distance line of action of CD and the line of action of F is R sin phi r sin phi. In fact, it is r sin phi at any distance. So it, it should be r sin phi at any distance. So meaning thereby the line of action of W and the line of action of another circle. We can make a circle. That circle is called as a friction circle. That circle is called as a friction circle. So the diameter of this, cir this circle is so uh, d sin phi or radius is r sin phi, r sin phi. But this is not exact value. This is approximately r sin phi. Approximately r sin. Phi. So f is a resultant of normal and frictional force. For equilibrium, f should pass through the point of intersection of the line of action of W and C D. C D, but it will not pass through. So, but line of action of F will make an angle of pi with the normal to the arc and thus so will be a tangent to a circle. So with its center O at O, with its center at O and having a radius of R sin pi approximately. R sin pi. This is the entire physics of the analysis of C phi solve. And this circle is called as a friction circle because uh, it is not related to the cohesion component of the soil. It is related to only the frictional component of the soil. That's why it is called as a friction circle. Friction circle. So now here, uh, what need to be done? That is direction of W that is vertically downward, CD and F are known. F are known because I know the friction angle phi, so I can able to draw the line of action of F. So I know the directions of W, I know the CD, I know the F. Then using by knowing the directions of A, B, C, C, D and F, I can develop a force polygon. I can develop a force polygon. So I can develop a force polygon. So this is called as a force polygon. So force polygon.
So once I know the CD from this force polygon, then I can able to determine that how much is the cohesion to be developed in the soil mass. So developed cohesion CD dash is nothing but capital CD that is the total cohesion over the entire arc length, entire arc length divided by the car length. So divided by the car length. But this is not so simple to solve it. So simple to solve it. And again, the CD is a function of several other parameters also. So this is what what further has been done is. So to find out most critical slip circle of AC, one has to make several iterations, several iterations. So then the CD, the cohesion that is developing all along the slip circle AC is also the function of alpha, alpha, beta, theta, and pi. Alpha, beta, theta, and pi. So since it is a function of everything, again stability as used is analytical solution uh, to develop the free defined graphs, free defined graphs. So for critical equilibrium, so in this case for the critical equilibrium, so the factor of 50 with respect to the strength, with respect to the friction, with respect to the cohesion is 1. 1. So we can substitute when f is equals to 1, then h is equal to h critical and cd dash is equal to cd. So cd dash is equal to cd. So comma h critical and uh, this is a function of alpha, theta, pi, theta dash. And again, if you look at the, this is similar form to the stability number. So c dash by comma h can be defined as the stability number. So this stability number is a function of alpha, beta, theta and pi. So alpha, beta, theta and pi. So Taylor has developed another predefined correlations, another predefined correlations, which is again the stability number as a function of beta, as a function of beta. So this is beta and uh, the pi, angle of internal friction, angle of internal friction of the soil. So once I know the stability number, then I can able to determine the critical height. I can able to determine the critical height. C dash, pi dash, C dash, pi dash, comma, and beta and H. Touch. So initially, assume some value of the pi dash D. What is the friction angle developing all along the failure plane? So since we are talking about the friction which is developing or the mobilized friction all along the slope failure, and where pi dash is, the friction at almost the, uh, failure stage. Therefore, pi dash D must be less than or equal to pi dash D. So this is at failure and this is just about to trigger the slope failure. So phi dash D is always less than or equal to phi dash. Such that phi dash D1 and phi dash D2 are, are less than phi D. So initially assume some value of phi dash D, phi dash D, this is step one. Then based on the assumed value, uh, determine factor of safety with respect to friction, uh, which is nothing but FS, uh, pi dash is tan pi dash by tan pi d1. So pi uh, pi is given, pi dash d is assumed one, assumed one. So determine the value of the factor of safety with respect to the friction. With respect to friction. Then step four, for each assumed value of pi dash d and beta, pi dash d and beta, determine m. So just recall. So this graph is a function of m, pi dash and beta. So if I know pi dash, if I know beta, I can able to determine the stability number m. So for each assumed value of pi dash d, beta determine the m. So again, we can get different values of the m for different assumed values of mobilized friction angle. Mobilized. Once I know the m, then I can determine the developed cohesion using the relationship of c dash by gamma h. Here c dash is uh, c d dash. c dash is c d dash. So determine the c d dash because this is also developed. When I say m 
equal to gamma h. For different assumed values of the pi dash t, I can determine different values of the c d dash. Once I know the c d dash, I know the c dash, then I can again able to calculate the factor of safety with respect to the cohesion. Now in step 3, I have determined the factor of safety with respect to the friction and in step 6, one need to determine the factor of safety with respect to the cohesion. Now, when I know the factor of safety with respect to the cohesion and the friction, I can develop a relationship between the factor of safety with respect to the cohesion and with respect to the friction. Then you will get a beautiful curve. Beautiful curve. Once this curve is known, draw a linear line starting from the horizon with an inclination of 45 degree. And wherever this linear line is meeting the curve, so that should give us the factor of safety with respect to the strength factor of safety with respect to strength. So it should be same on x-axis and y-axis. And this is the entire procedure of using the C5 soil, uh, the stability number or the stability chart for determining the factor of safety against strength. Okay, so it is a bit difficult to understand. Let us try to take some example. So this is uh, again procedure. If you want to determine uh, critical height of the slope, so when I say critical again, the factor of safety with respect to the position, with respect to the friction, with respect to the strength is unity. So given beta, gamma, c dash and pi dash, so if I know beta and pi dash, so I can able to determine the m value. So once I know the m, I can able to determine the critical height of the slope. Height of the slope. So, this is the summary about uh, uh, this. I will explain, I think, later. Uh, are okay. So now uh, we have seen two variety of uh, stability analysis. Same proposed by the Taylor only. Taylor stability chart for pi is equals to zero analysis. This is what is the graph you proposed. And Taylor stability analysis for C pi soil. Pi soil and C pi soil. Okay, so this y-axis is stability number and this is function of slope angle, slope angle beta and friction angle pi dash. Okay, so uh, this is what is the contribution by the Taylor. Now let us, uh, uh, if further procedures as proposed by different people uh, for in case of the C pi soil. So one of them is Singh et al. So Singh in 1970 provided a graph uh, for uh, determining the factor of safety, FS, for factor of safety. Here you can see, he has proposed different predefined charts as a function of C dash by gamma H versus the angle of internal friction pi dash versus the factor of safety. So if I know the internal friction of the soil and if I decide, if I have decided the minimum value of the factor of safety, then I can able to determine what should be the minimum critical height of the slope critical height of the slope or else so if I, if you already decided what should be the minimum height of the embankment so determine c dash by gamma h and you know the internal friction of the soil sample then try to pick up the value of the factor of safety so whether it is meeting the codal prescriptions or not if it is meeting yes if not then you need to go for other different values so as per him also as per singh et al so his calculation show that if friction angle is greater than or equal to 3 degree, the critical circles are almost two circles. Almost two circles. Now he has developed several predefined graphs for different uh, slope angles. As you can see here, uh, for slope 1 vertical to 0.5 horizontal. This A, 1 vertical to 0.5 horizontal. B, 1 vertical to 0.75 horizontal. 1 vertical to 0.5, 1 vertical to 0.75 horizontal, 1 vertical to 1 vertical, 1 vertical to 1 horizontal. This is 1 is to 1 and this is 1 is to 1.5. Then this is 1 is to 2, then 1 is to 5, then 1 is to 3. So for different slope angles, sync has developed different graphs. Okay, you can follow any of the procedure. You can follow the stability chart or you can follow the sync analysis. Then Michalowski, so Michalowski in 2002, he also proposed another method. Uh, 
the rotational slip surface where the failure plane is a circle where the failure plane is a circle but mikolovsky considered log spiral log spiral as you can see here so instead of we assumed the failure surface is a log spiral then accordingly so he has given several predefined chart you can see here his contribution is uh, he developed as a function of the slope angle beta and c dash by gamma h into tan pi dash and fs by so tan pi dash since c is there pi is there so these graphs are valid for c phi soil and for different uh, slope angles 15 30 45 60 75 90 again this is uh, this is 1 is 1 1 is 75 or 1 is 1 1 is 5 then above 1 is 2 1 is 3 so on and so forth okay so this is the contribution by michel lewinsky so they try to simplify as max as possible so when you use these charts it is easy to pick up the value of the factor of safety if i know the slope angle if i know the pi value if i know the c value okay so this is what uh, contribution made in c5 soil but this is a mass procedure mass procedure let us try to take small example and of all these methods how to understand or how to use these methods to compute the path of safety so first a slope with a beta of 45 degree to be constructed The slope with the beta is equal to 45 degrees to be constructed. We take soil that is pi dash 20 degree and c dash 24 kilometer per square meter. The unit weight of compacted soil will be 18.9 kilometer per cubic meter. Find the critical height of the slope. If the height of the slope is 10 meter, determine the factor of safety with respect to the strength. With respect. Okay, so find the critical height of the slope. So when I say critical, again, imagine that your fact of safety with respect to c, with respect to pi, with respect to strength is one. Stability number is equal to c dash by gamma into h critical. Gamma into That's critical. So I know the chart, the m versus beta versus pi. So beta is 20, beta is 20, beta is 20, and uh, uh, what other things are known? Beta is 20, and slope angle beta 45, beta 45. So beta identify beta 45, and pi 20. so corresponding to pi 20 draw a vertical projection until it is touching the beta curve of 45 beta curve of 45 so from there draw another horizontal line to pick up the value of the stability number m so m is equal to 0.06 for beta is equal to 45 pi dash 20 so m from this chart can be determined as 0.06 so h critical can be calculated now using this equation c dash by gamma h so 24 by 18.9 into 0.06 what you will get is 21.1 meter so 21.1 meter so next uh, if the height of the slope is 10 meter determine the factor of safety with respect to strength with respect to strength So now here we need to follow the stability chart again. Uh, if we assume that full friction is mobilized, then referring to figure 15.23, beta is equal to 45 degree, pi dash is equals to pi dash is equals to 20. 20. So we have so m is equals to corresponding to pi 20, m is 0.06, cd dash by gamma h, cd dash by gamma h, then cd is equals to 11.34. so we assumed that pi pi dash d is 20 so uh, follow the so many number of steps so follow these steps step 2 assume the value of pi dash d so 
so once assume the pi dash d then i can able to determine the uh, uh, factor of shape with respect to the friction with respect to friction that is uh, tan 20 by tan 20 because you are assuming pi dash d is pi dash so it is one now corresponding to this one uh, c dash d corresponding to m of 0 0.06 c dash d is 11.34 but c dash is 24 given so f c dash is 2.12 so here the f c dash and f i dash are not equal are not equal so therefore So the factor of safety with respect to friction is not equivalent to friction. So this is not the factor of safety with respect to strength. Why? Because suppose if you draw the a graph between F C S versus F phi, then if you draw an uh, inclined line of 45 degree, both should match. But since here they are not matching, so then what we need to do? You have to assume another value of phi dash. Since FCS, FC factor of safety with respect to cohesion is not equivalent to the friction. I need to assume another value of pi dash d. So here in this second trial, it is assumed as 15 degree. Assumed as 15 degree. But beta is remains same. Okay, beta is remains same. Now corresponding to corresponding to pi 15, pi 15 and beta 45 beta 45 pick up the value of the m that is 0 0.083 0 0.083 so once i know m value stability number substitute this into the equation of c dash d by gamma h and determine the value of the c dash d so this is 15.6 15.6 again calculate uh, since you assumed in trial to pi dash d as 15 so factor of safety with respect to pi dash friction is uh, tan pi by tan pi d this is 1.36 with respect to the cohesion c dash by c d dash so that is 24 by 15.69 1.53 .5. okay so in the trial one f pi is 1 f c is 2.12 in the trial 2 f pi is 1.36 f c is 1.53 1.53 so still in this case also when you assume pi dash d is 15 your factor of safety f pi is not equivalent to f c that means you have to go for third trial you have to go for third trial so here it is summarized summarized so for different value assumed values of the pi dash d so shall be assumed pi dash d of 20 we calculated tan pi dash d and calculated uh, factor of safety with respect to friction pi d dash is assumed as 10, fourth trial pi d dash is assumed as 5. So the mobilized friction angle is uh, different values of the mobilized friction angle. Now what you need to do, since we assumed different values of the uh, mobilized friction, now accordingly we have calculated different values of the friction, so factor of safety with respect to the friction and factor of safety with respect to the cohesion. Now I can able to develop a graphical relationship between fc dash fc dash so this is fc dash versus f pi dash so this is what is the graphical relationship now onto it we need to draw an inclined line with an inclination of 45 degree from the horizon wherever this line touches the curve and from there you project on horizontal and vertical line so then that should give you the factor of safety with respect to the strength so here in this case, so it comes out to be 1.42, 1.42. That means the factor of safety with respect to strength is 1.42, 1.4. Okay, so this is how we have to use the stability chart for determining the factor of safety against the strength using the stability chart, using the stability chart. Now let equation and Michalowski equation. So this is uh, Singh's equation. 
uh, so we we could find that the beta corresponding to 45 is 1 is to 1 1 is to 1 so corresponding to 1 is to 1 this is the predefined chart predefined chart so i know the pi dash so i know the pi dash so i can able to determine the c dash by gamma h c dash is 24 uh, in the given sum uh, C dash is 24 and pi dash is 20. Pi dash is 20. So, as for Singh's equation, I need to calculate C dash by gamma h. C dash by gamma h, 24 by 18.9 into 10. Height of the slope is uh, 10. Height of the embankment is 10 meter. This is 0.127. So, 0.127. So, using this figure, C dash by gamma h is 0.127 corresponding to 0 0.127 somewhere here corresponding to 0 0.127 and corresponding to pi of 20 you have to pick up so pi of 20 0 0.127 so some to pick up the factor of safety value factor of safety value so or at least you don't need to use uh, yeah so then so this approximately gives us 1.4, 1.4. Just try to imagine. When we employed the stability chart, we got 1.42. And when we have used sinks uh, charts, that we got 1.4, 1.4. So then the last method is uh, Michalowski solution. So here, this is the relationship between Fs by tan pi dash and she does by gamma h into tan pi dash and beta is 15 degree. So here beta is known, beta is known. You are asked to determine the factor of safety value. You have to determine the Fs. And we can able to calculate C dash by gamma h. So first calculate uh, C dash by gamma h, C dash by gamma h. C dash by gamma h and beta is known. So C dash by gamma h is how much? Uh, h is h critical. For beta I 40. You uh, the factor of C. So here uh, beta is equal to 40. Uh, C dash by gamma h is 3.49 by h critical. And suppose if we assume for a critical height f s is equal to 1, f s is equal to 1, then uh, you can determine the critical height, the critical height, that is 20.5. Okay, or else, if you want to determine the factor of safety, so if you know the height, if uh, my height is 10 meter, C dash by gamma height, calculate, and beta corresponding to 45. So project any line, then pick up the value of the ordinate. Say uh, this is 3.2, 3.2 is equal to Fs by tan pi dash. So from there, uh, this is equivalent to 3.2. And from there, you calculate the factor of 50. Factor of 50. For here, so it has been done in a reverse way. So both are same. Uh, the, for critical height, Fs is equals to 1. Thus, C dash by gamma h tan pi dash is equals to 24 by 18 point. Uh, this h critical is not known. Then Fs by tan pi dash is 2.747. So 2.747. I know the 2.747 uh, and I know the beta, 45. So beta 45. So command to the ordinate uh, x axis. Command to the x axis. Then correspond to this one, what we will get is 0 0.17. 0 0.17. So uh, I know the 0 0.17 and unknown is uh, critical height of the slope. So calculate the critical height of the slope, which is 20.5 meter. So, uh, so then here, uh, if I know the height for h is equal to 10 meter in the same sum, sorry, in the same sum, if h is equal to 10 meter, then determine the value of the factor of safety with respect to the strength. So C dash by gamma h into 10 pi dash. So 24 by 10, so 0.349.
I'm sorry. So uh, this is the one can use the Mitchell Lewis keys. 
predefined charts, but determining the either critical height or minimum factor of safety with respect to the strength. So both are there. Okay, so this is uh, all about uh, there is a process called as a determination of stability factor and uh, determination of factor of safety with a mass procedure. Okay, uh, so let me take a couple of questions from you all. So before I begin the method of slices. So any questions as of now? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, anybody has any question? So, once that part is clear, then I can take up another part that is method of slices because this is the most important one. Or maybe what I will do is I will stop it here only uh, because. So far, whatever we have covered is determination of fact. so determination of factor of safety by mass procedure. Mass procedure means considering the entire area of the failure A, B, C as a single mass. So the way we have taken W is the weight of the entire the entire area or mass uh, chunk of the soil. Okay. Now onward, so we are going to determine the same factor of safety. However, considering density value, different coefficient value, different internal friction value, for different soil layers. So for different soil layers. So that part will be covered in the method of slices. So if you have any questions on uh, so non-homogeneous non -homo soil, so then I can answer, then I can uh, so terminate today's class so, so that we can discuss so this method of slices from the up post after mid exam. Anybody has any questions? 